that's how you know I got a lot on my mind and a lot on my heart because I'm not even going anywhere. I'm not even going anywhere and I know I needed to finish the last get ready with me where I abruptly ended the vlog. Um, but hello, my name is AB. This is Brown Beauty TV. Hello if you're new here and welcome back to another weekly Oh, welcome back to another Get Ready With Me. I currently have nowhere to go. And I just am feeling, I am really in a funk right now. And I know this is the week that I start to PMS. I know that my period is right around the corner to really just rob me of <laughs> the little ounce of just peace and joy that I have. And there's just so many things going on in my life right now that I just really need to get off the brain and off my chest. Um, so hello if you're new here, welcome. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much. Make sure you hit that notification and subscribe button and I would love to see you back um, and give this video a thumbs up. So prior to my last Get Ready With Me, I was filling you guys in on, oh, by the way, I'm trying this new Smashbox um, moisturizer or primer it's super hydrating primer it's a triple hyaluronic acid one so if you've been watching my other get ready with me's then you know that i use all the smashbox um glow primer and the photo finishing primer um but if you guys have seen my Let's get ready with me. I was brushing you guys up on a situation that happened last month where I had a friend come visit me. Um, and I'm very much in my relationship building like era of my life. I love the fact that I'm now a girl's girl, which I hadn't always been. I have a very a strange relationship with my sisters. Um, my mother and I just decided maybe like two years ago that I was gonna be more open to just relationships and friendships when two of my homegirls from my hometown moved here um, and I just started to like invite them into things that I wasn't comfortable in that then made me comfortable because they were there so last month i had a friend who came to visit me and because i'm in this era i was very much so like open to the suggestion of hanging out knowing that we didn't have like much in common other than the fact that we attended the same church when we were younger other than that there was no like real like there was no real interest that we had between each other and like I felt like we were trying to have more interests, but she had a seven-year-old daughter. Um, she is a single mother, which alone is a different world, but I, I was trying to be just like open to the fact that, you know, like who says that two people that lives in, live in different worlds can exist? Like people, obviously we need each other to, you know uplift us and to pull us out when we're feeling low and you know all that stuff so i was very much so just open to the idea of rebuilding a relationship um but there are just certain things i feel like at this age that like if it doesn't align with who i am why even bother like bringing it into my life it's kind of like where i'm at after this situation. So I pretty much told you guys how the weekend started. Just a little background. Um, Willie was going out of town to Chicago and I had a class that I was teaching this same weekend that he planned to go to Chicago. Turns out that I had the class dates wrong, so I ended up not going with him um, and didn't find out till the day I showed up to my class and no one was there and the facilitators told me that I had the dates mixed up 
which then I really wanted to sob. But then I figured like, well, maybe God needed to reveal something to me in this time. That's what I kept telling myself. But I was really just feeling more and more silly as like time went on. So um, she comes out here on a Friday night and I invite her out with another girlfriend of mine whose birthday it was. And that was our first time hanging out together in a public setting with other people in a social environment. We were sitting at a dinner table. Afterwards, we went out to like a lounge slash club. Like these are things I just usually do with my friends. So I was like, why not? But I never had seen her in a social setting before, not even on her Instagram, not even like, I, I felt like over time she would try to like, showcase that she was a social person but like in all actuality like she has a daughter she probably didn't get out much like so on and so forth pretty much our social environments are just completely different and i knew that from the jump but again i was giving this the benefit of the doubt my guy was gone out of town i was thinking i could use some well-deserved girl time so hey um but there are just things that like you know you don't align with someone when like the comments that they make aren't like enthusiastic comments on like your life on your character on just how you present yourself if there if there aren't of any type of like positivity then like you know you guys just don't align um like she would say things like i'm a girly girl which like i mean Yes, I, I carry a purse. Yes, I love jewelry. Yes, I love silk. Yes, I love robes. Multiple different versions of robes, kimonos. I love makeup. I love hair. Like, I love perfume. I love all things girl. Like, yes, I am a girly girl. But that, to me, made me realize that maybe you're not the girly girl that I am. And I don't know if this is going to, if this is going to work out. So, meanwhile, while my boyfriend was out of town with his um with his family they do something every year where they throw what's called a life party and the life party is just to honor those in their family that's passed away and it's a time for like them all to get together and just celebrate so on and so forth and if you guys aren't like new to my channel i've expressed my relationship with my own family before in a like sit down video um in my life perspectives title playlist and short story long long story story short i am not a like family oriented person I do not sit amongst my immediate family and we plan and party and talk amongst ourselves about things that we could be struggling with or things that are going on that are new in our lives that, you know, we just want to share and connect and just have girl time. So I just initially do not gravitate to like others family who like gets together and things like that also didn't grow up celebrating the holidays so that's another reason for you know my family to not have reasons to come together um aside of the uh, outside of just holidays we do not get together in general so um i found a lot of my family and connectivity and socialism within my friendships that I feel like I just started to realize the importance of friendship, the importance of sisterhood being that I did not like, I didn't grow up in an environment that facilitated those kind of like ideologies about women and how much we need them. You know, I was taught that like, you know, friendships are overrated and you should be independent and like all these other just like false beliefs due to someone who has probably been maybe scarred in their friendships or just never had relationships that they felt like were worth keeping around or whatever. So um, when my friend came out here, it was like fairly late at night. I was kind of running behind because I was just getting off of work. 
So when she came to my house, I was in a bath towel, still having to do my makeup, still having to do my hair, but I know that I would be running late. Um, so I expected her to kind of show up to my house a little bit later, but when I got home, she was already here. I mentioned this also in my last get ready with me. And I feel like the moment that we just realized we weren't on the same kind of time. Um, so later on in the night, or no, let me rewind. Before we get into the car to head to the birthday dinner, she asks me if I wanted an edible, which I mentioned in my last Get Ready With Me. You guys know I had a THC seltzer as I was doing my makeup. I like to take gummies when I'm on my menstrual cycle. And um, I don't like, I don't take them in social settings. Um, so I was kind of like thinking to myself when she, offer like oh you must do this all the time like you know some people just have like a comfort zone when they get into social settings as far as like drinking or not drinking smoking or not smoking or whatever they do to like make themselves feel comfortable I thought was her norm so I really didn't question it I was just kind of like oh okay cool but I won't be taking part in that we get to the lounge where all of my friends were meeting up at which then I guess her edibles started to kick in. And this is when things really went left because we're in a social setting and you know, guys are talking to us and wanting to buy us drinks and just conversing in general. Like not even to like get on that, not even to be like trying to get our numbers, but just like being in a social setting and conversing with other people outside of like the people that you came with happens pretty often. So there was this one guy that came up to us and started dancing and we're all just dancing, me and my other friends. And he goes, what's your names? And you know, I'm like, oh, I'm Africa. And she goes, I'm Jamaica. And I was like, in my head, kind of just like, I was just like, haha, she's just playing. Like her name is not Jamaica. Cause he started to look confused and like, like y'all must do this all the time kind of phase. And I was just like, um no we actually don't do this like I don't know what's going on I don't know why she said that but that's not her name and the guy just starts to look at us very strange and he walks off and like at, when he walked off I was like why did you do that like why did you say that why didn't you just introduce yourself like a normal person like why are you being very like abnormal about like that oh, something's in my teeth I just lost. Um, so I was just kind of like, all right, I'll just pretend like that didn't happen. But I was very like annoyed and pissed off. Like, can we be mature? Can we be mature adults? So, you know, as I'm talking to her, she's kind of just like looking like confused. Like, what What do you mean? Like, what, what do you mean? Like, and I was just like, okay, like whatever. I start to like move around. I go to the bathroom and she's like, do you want me to come with you? And I'm like, no, cause then we'll lose our table. Like just, you know, like just chill here. But I literally walked off to take a deep breath cause I was so annoyed. And you know, if you're my friend and I'm bringing you out with other friends, like show who you are, like be transparent about who you are and like, since this is our first time being out together, I don't really know what to expect out of her either. So I was kind of just like taken by surprise that like that was how she acts. Um, so I eventually get back to the table. Um, her and when I like when I confronted her about the situation, none of the other girls were around. It was literally just her and I when I said, like, why were you being weird? Like, why did you do that? Yada, yada, yada. And um, I feel like from that point on, like, the night just started feeling very awkward with her around. So we meet up with that same guy later on in the night. And he's like, can I get y'all something to drink? Like, what do you like to drink? So I tell him what I like to drink which was a gin and tonic. And 
he asked her what she wants to drink and she became like nonverbal. She just started like, she just does this, like shake her head and like put her head down and like kind of just like give him a hand motion or whatever. And he like, what do you drink? Like, what do you let's drink? It's fine. Like, I'll get it. And she's just like being very like weird, like not speaking with her voice. And I was like, what do you drink? Like, what do you like to drink? And she was like, just give me whatever she has. So I'm instantly in my head, like, this is embarrassing. Like, not only is this my first time, like, coming out with you, but, like, this might be my last time coming out with you. Like, so after that, I eventually walk off. And um, she, like, took a seat somewhere. I meet up with my other friends. And then pretty much... She comes back to me and she's like, can I see your car keys? And I'm like, no, like, why? I didn't immediately, like, immediately say no, but I was like, why? Like, what's wrong? And she's like, because I don't want to come off empathetic. I don't want to come off like I'm being rude or like a bitch or nothing like that. Especially after like the first encounter with the guy coming up to us and stuff like that. Like, I'm like, I wonder if that like shook her up or like, you know, I was starting to like be concerned. And she's like, I just need to go that. I'm like, I, she's like, I just don't feel good. Like, I need to go lay down. I was like, lay down? Excuse me? Like, what are you for? Like, what's going on? So literally, she, I'm like, no, like, if you're not feeling well, we could just leave. Like, it's fine. Like, I'm not going to leave you in the car by yourself. She's like, no, like, I don't want to ruin your night. Like, you, you seem to be having a good time. Like, I don't want to ruin the night for you. And in the back of my mind, I'm like, you know, it's fine. Like, it's okay. Knowing, like, in my head, like, I actually was a little bit upset. I'm not going to lie. I was kind of annoyed. So I was just kind of like, you know, it's fine. We could just leave. We go to the car. And she's like, I was like, was everything okay in there? Like, what's tea? Like, what's going on? And she's like, I was just really high. Like, I got really high. And I was like, but I thought you did this all the time. Like, I thought you take edibles all the time. She was like, I think this one was stronger than the the ones I usually take that my friend gave me. Like, and I just took a little piece, like, yada, yada, yada. And it's like, I feel like as a growing adult, like, you know when you need to eat. And if you don't eat, how things that you consume drug-wise will affect you differently than any other time that you've ever done the drug before, like... So I was just kind of like, but we ate at the dinner. So I was also kind of like, mm, I'm confused. I was just very confused. And I told her straight up, like, you know, this is our first social setting out together. And I just don't think it was a good like representation of like how you are in a social setting. Like you couldn't order a drink. You couldn't like show your personality. Like, I don't even know who you are in these settings. And that's even more frustrating because I'm bringing you around people that like, don't know you and I kind of re-getting to know you so I was very much so like disappointed and I told her like how disappointed that I was and she was like what don't you understand that I'm just high like why don't why can't you just understand that I'm high and it's like I understand that you're high but what I don't understand is why you decided to be high in an environment that you had no control over you've never been to you've never met these people you've like had no like common interest with before you got like you know you didn't build like a common interest with anyone before and she wasn't even like apologetic either she wasn't like oh my god girl like I'm so sorry like you know like this you I usually am not not like this but I'm just super high so like I'm I'm tweaking like you right like she didn't have any like accountability for like how she was acting and what she was doing which also was like yeah I don't know if we could ever exist again in the future um so we get back to my house and the conversation kind of continued on and I was making her bed and she would just make like little comments about like me looking like I'm an actor and like I belong in California somewhere and like 
so much so that I was just kind of like, are you hating? Like, what's going on? Like, why are you saying these things? And like, it was other stuff that she was saying that was just kind of like, not coming from like a positive space. Like none of the things she was saying was like positive comments. So I straight up asked her like, are you hating? Like, and she got like super quiet and she got wide eyed and it was just kind of like, I hate that I even had to ask that, but I was genuinely like concerned, like because the math just wasn't wasn't math. I was I, I like literally was like I'm confused why you're making comments about how I look and how I'm acting like an actor. Like I don't know what that stuff means. Like it has nothing to do with like what happened tonight. Like she's like that's why all those guys were trying were trying to talk to you and like because you you just fit this like persona or whatever which I get what she was saying but it was also like okay if you're feeling somewhat insecure like then we can have a different conversation but like now you're just like blabby so eventually I was just like let's just sleep on this and talk about it the next day the next day I take us out to breakfast and since she was more like in a sober place, I thought like maybe we could revisit the conversation or if we, if need be, we could revisit the conversation or like, you know, just seeing where her head was. But I can already tell like she was being like very avoidant a little bit of what happened. Like she got on the phone and called her sisters and like, you know, like talked to them kind of for most of the morning before I even woke up like we planned to go to Pilates but it was raining so it was fine we just ended up going out to breakfast instead but it was just interesting um then that following night Saturday we go out again with the same people and I felt like she was trying to like prove that she could be like something that she other than who she was last night and her doing that was kind of like outside of like her and I, like she would just like go be really buddy, buddy with my friend. And she would just kind of like mm, be like at my friend's beck and call because it was her birthday being like, oh, do you need me to tie your shoes? I could do it for you. Or do you got it? Like, you know, just like that kind of rhetoric. And it was very interesting to see how like, her being uncomfortable made her want to be that to someone else. And she would say things like, Oh, like I'm glad you're affectionate. Cause I'm affectionate too. It was like stuff I never heard before. It was like, okay, well we went out to have lunch with my girlfriend for her birthday and some other people. And we were all talking about like our experiences and our backgrounds. And we were talking about like, um, what tribes we think we're from, like African tribes, or if we're in, if we're like um, Liberian, because there's a lot of li Liberians here, like whatever. So we're all talking like that. And she was like, yeah, uh, I'm Nigerian too. I was like, mm, are you? I've never heard that. You've never told, like, it was just like giving, trying to fit in. It was really giving, trying to fit in. And I just didn't understand, didn't understand her from that point on. And I was just like, well, she's going home soon. So I'm just going to not bring up anything else. The whole car ride, she talked on the phone. Um, On our way there, she was just like on the phone the whole time, like to the point where I had to say like, you know, like I, I would like to listen to some music, you know, like I didn't say like, this is kind of rude that you're talking on the phone, like, you know. But in my mind, it was just like, you just don't understand social cues. And I've been there before, like where I haven't understood social cues before, but someone had to tell me like, like, this is not okay. And then I caught on and never did the shit again. But it seemed as though no one told her. So, you know, I was just kind of like feeling like tension, like heavy tension. She got off the phone. We, we go to the next destination and it was quiet the entire car ride. Like we didn't have any like girlfriendy moments where like the music on and we 
singing and like vibing just so well. Like none of those things were happening. So eventually we get to the place and she becomes like somewhat more outgoing. And I knew it was like a facade. So it was just kind of like, now I feel like you're playing in my face a little bit. Like I was a little insulted, but again, didn't say anything, just whatever. And I'm just like disappointed in myself for not seeing the red flags early on and like stopping them and like just realizing the type of person that I am and the type of per people that I like to keep around, like the company that I like to keep around. And when that doesn't add up, when it doesn't match up, I shouldn't feel like obligated to go against my own like system of protecting my peace. We get back to my house and she gets very argumentative out of nowhere. And she was on the phone with someone and she kept saying like, the devil is busy, the devil is busy. And I was like, you know, like, I don't really talk like that in my house. Like, I'm not, like, screaming to the top of my lungs that the devil is busy and, like, you know. And if I'm at anyone else's house, like, I'm not going to be screaming about anything. Like, I'm going to have my conversations very, like, quietly. You know, I'm going to keep them short because I know I'm in someone else's space. And I'm like, you know, there's just, like, etiquette that she didn't have. And um, it was to the point where I was like, you know, like, but you know, like, what the end of the, I understand like the devil be busy but like God be busier and you know I just kind of like start trying to speak positive to whatever situation she had going on on the phone and she was like I hope you're taking your own advice because you being real passive aggressive right now and she goes in the bathrooms and slams the door and I was like I'm being passive aggressive, but you literally go in my bathroom and slam the door. Like, like I just can't do this. It, it was being like, it started to just be an emotional, like baggage kind of situation. So eventually it starts getting like really heated and I'm just like, I mean, I don't know where this is coming from, but, and she starts like packing her stuff and saying like, I'm leaving, like you the devil, you evil and like all this other kind of stuff. And I was just kind of like, oh, like sad, like that sucks that you feel like I'm the devil. Like I hate that I even like let her at my house, like. Cause it just started to taint the environment and then we literally start physically fighting like she physically assaults me in my house and I was so angry like I'm in a robe we had just got back to my house so I had changed my clothes and got into a robe and like you know so I'm tussling in a whole bathrobe and I was just so like why like why did I let you in my home like why did I think this was gonna be like and I literally beat myself up about not being able to read that's like discern that better even though like I, I spoke in my last get ready with me that like Will had already had his concerns with the fact that I was mixing friend groups um so if you haven't watched that one please go back and watch but there was like tension before there was tension, I feel like. And it just sucks, man, because I was really trying to give the benefit of the doubt when deep down I feel like I had already knew that like this will be the determining factor on if this friendship can exceed this weekend. And I felt just so violated in my own home. And like the old me would have been like, very angry I would have been very like rah-rah I would have been very like up in arms like ready to go again and like my heart just felt different like that's how I know I'm like healing and getting older and just becoming more like empathetic because it probably came from a strong place of insecurity and I know just how she grew up like and I got sad like I started crying I called Will and I started crying really hard 
Um, and I was just debating on like whether or not I want to file a police report because like that was just crazy. Like, you know where I live, you have family here, like they could come to my house. Like I just felt so attacked, like spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally attacked. And my house just felt so different. And when you let people into your space where you have created such a safe haven for yourself and something like that happens, it's like, where did I go wrong? Like, how did I let the enemy trick me into coming into my door? Like I opened the door for this to happen. So I literally was beating myself up about that for quite some time. It took a while to shake off. So the next morning when I woke up, I woke up at like six in the morning and I decided that I was gonna file a police report. Um, and there was just a lot of evidence that I feel like I didn't have. So I felt kind of silly trying to prove my case um, when I didn't have any like bumps or bruises and I didn't have any cameras in my house to sh like, and I was just so hurt. Like I was so hurt. I bring you into my environment and like you don't respect my space you never ha like respected my space from the time you walked in the door like and I can't say that I've never been in a predicament like that where like I didn't feel worthy in the presence of someone that was like at a place that I either wanted to be or a place that seemed impossible for me to get to it could have been a number of different things. So I felt very empathetic, but I also was very upset at myself. So I was going through a lot of emotions. And then to know that like, I pretty much went through that battle for no reason because I very much so could have went home with my boyfriend and celebrated with his family. So I was just so like, emotionally drained I feel like the whole month I was just like spiritually and emotionally drained like I was so like not in my just right consciousness I feel like it was a very like old familiar feeling that I had outgrown that I felt like creeped back up like to try to trick me like I was just so so tarnished um so yeah, all that to say, just be careful of the company that you keep around. Like every old relationship is not meant to be like rekindled. It's, it's not meant to see like where it goes. And we do this with like, I feel like love interests, old flings. Um, this was my first time experiencing it with a friendship, which I never like thought could be a thing but clearly it's a thing and I just encourage anybody to be careful and be mindful of the company that you keep around because just because someone heavily admires you and says that they want to have this relationship with you like if you guys don't share the same values the same motives in life and have just like an overall like abundant relationship outside of how y'all initially meet met and it's like constantly evolving I would dead it like I would personally dead it um but yeah I was having such a beautiful summer before that happened um but you know when they say like when a bunch of unforeseen unfortunate circumstances happen you are on your way to a blessing. So that's kind of just how I went about that is that that was just to reveal to me that wherever I'm going, I cannot take certain people with me and that's okay. It's not easy to accept, but Eventually, you do have to realize, like, even family members, like, everyone can't just come with you to the places that God is trying to get you to. So maybe it needed to be, like, revealed to me in that way that she was just not someone I could keep around. So 
that's the end of that story. But another, moving on to another, like, oh, I hope I don't cry when I talk about this because I am PMSing right now and I've been crying a lot more than usual lately. Um, again, like the saying when people say that if you are experiencing like hardships and so on and so forth, then that means that you are on your way to just a successful journey. Um, I've been documenting this new little journey that I'm on right now, but last month I was invited to this thing called Trap Karaoke. And Trap Karaoke is pretty much a karaoke like event that goes on tour to different states. And they do a contest on um, different categories of art, like music genres. So it could be R&B, it could be gospel, it could be rap, like, you know. Um, and you submit, like, what songs you want to do. Like, it was all, like, virtual. Not virtual, but it was all, like, through their app or their online, whatever. As soon as I walked into this event with a few of my friends, we were um, given a QR code and the QR code was to sign up if you were going to like perform. And like prior to this day, I kept saying like, I can't, like I'm gonna perform, like I'm gonna perform for this event. Like in the back of my mind, I was gonna perform. I love performing arts, like I love just theatrics I love like music poetry spoken word like anything along those lines I just love it I love like stand-up comedy um like me and Will went to see Cat Williams this year we went to a circus this year and like those are my happy place growing up in Chicago I just feel like though that is a lot of my upbringing like I was in the majorette but Billiken parade performing like I just love performing arts so like so so much so um my friends and I were given a QR code to sign up and I signed up I was the last group to go there were three groups I was the, in the last group to go and I did an R&B song by Avant if you know you know and I perform my first love uh, featuring Kiki Watts and I won I was the last person to go on stage and I won the entire contest um, and it's funny because like my friend prior to me going this was a week after my other like that situation happened this was a week after that this karaoke event came to town and my friend that came with me to the event she was the one that invited me and she's like I feel like you will win if you signed up and I was like in my mind like I feel like I will win too like I was very confident about just like I'm always very confident when it comes to like performing and stuff like I was a dancer when I was in high school I've done like poetry things, um, like spoken word in front of people. I've acted before. Like I'm just one of those people that like I can dive into any world and make it as though I've been doing it for a long time because I just love seeing myself in different facets and in different like forms of art. Um, so she was like yeah like I feel like if you sign up you might win and then like my boyfriend goes like yeah I wouldn't be surprised if you would win like that's just kind of how like life is set up for you and in my heart I was like you know like I don't want to sound arrogant or anything like that but I do feel like this favor over my life of just like a winning streak I also feel like you know 
God gives his toughest soldiers battles and the battles that I have had over the last few just years of my life have really shown true like perseverance and it's shown like true um willpower for me to just not give up on things that I really want to do and not to say like acting was something that I really wanted to do or performing is something I really wanted to do, but I have wanted to do performing before, whether it was musically acting, um, which I never really pursued. There were times I would like sign up for, um, spoken my like open mics I would go to. And that world just is so comforting for me. It's entirely like comforting. And I just went home that day feeling so re reborn. Like I literally felt so rebirthed into like a new version of myself or just like, or just like a version of myself that I forgot about or that I just left behind somewhere in life where life started to get very serious where you know it was no longer life was no longer about like having fun and figuring out who you are like my entire 20s was spent like mourning and trying to heal myself and going through therapy all the time um and trying to survive it was like survival mode i was in survival mode for so much of my 20s that doing that like rebirth such a new chemistry in my heart and in my mind and just with my my soul my spirit was just so reignited all of the posts that were reposted online like of the footage were just so heartwarming all of my peers like applauding me and saying how good I looked and how good of a job I did it was just so rewarding. It was so refreshing. And like, I could see how those kind of moments can be very addicting. And like that, like instant gratification can be just very um, addicting. Like I can see that for, I could see that being like an addiction in my life, but I can also see it being like, such a positive influence over my life also especially for someone like me that's like had a lot of unforeseen like circumstances um as mentioned in my blog where i did a lapse a time lapse um from year 2020 2017 to basically the pandemic um you know I've just been feeling an extreme like transitional period and I don't know if I'll ever stop transitioning and I think doing that performance made me realize that like you don't reach a destination of who you are to become you're continuously becoming like you continuously getting to know your strengths your values the way you show up why you like to show up that way and it never ends um i'm also reading the power moves book by power moves by sarah jake that i've been reading um for months now and there is so many different passages that speak to the power within you and not even how to like discover it but like instances that's happened that will allow you to connect with it and I just couldn't agree more with a lot of the things that she talks about in that book and how you can really be afraid of your power like you can really be afraid to step into the power within you because it's an unknown place but we're so it's so easy to just like not discover that part of you and just allow life to be very securing and mundane. I also feel like during the month of August, um, 
I had made a lot of threads or tweets, I should say, on threads. And I was expressing just how I was ready to take a leap. I was ready to see a shift happen in my life. I was ready to like fuck around and find out whatever that looked like. Not knowing like that could come with a lot, but I was, I was so afraid of what it would come with. I was so afraid of losing my comfortability. I was so afraid of like losing my, my assets and like things like that at the risk of change and transformation. Um, if you guys have been watching just my weekly vlogs lately, when I have been like expressing that, you know, I would be like slowing down soon, like done going out, um, not getting like my nails and stuff done so much and using my time to really focus on um, the destiny that God has for me. I've been wanting to make a career change for the past maybe two years and I'll be going into my 30s next year in February. So all these things that have brought me into like this alpha female that I am today who doesn't play about their life, who is confident and so like reassured and has all these leadership qualities. Like, what do you actually do with them? Where do you place them? Like being a part of this organization, the Black Collective and having the means to sit at a table with people that will help further someone else's um, belief, further their desires, further their business practices. Like it's such, became such a huge deal. Like philanthropy is such a big deal for me now that the day-to-day -day mundane life, although it was very securing, feels like it doesn't match my like internal. As we'll see just like more of a transition and what that looks like, me getting into making a career change and doing things that kind of facilitate more of the community I want to serve and how I'm starting to go about doing that and stepping away kind of from my just normal ways of sustaining my life. And I know it's not going to be easy. Um, and I know it won't be just a walk in the park, but I, I'm really believing that God is, is telling me to live out loud. I think he's telling me to live with more purpose and to really let his glory be revealed through me and this is such a hard hard conversation to have it's such a hard thing to come to terms to but i've experienced habitually the same things and anytime i try to let my will be done and not the lord's will be done in my life a lot of things start to transpire that i just can't make sense of like my friend coming here and doing that and experiencing that was, especially for it to just be in my heart, for it to just be different is enough to say that like, sometimes the world does not always play nice. Like people were actually jealous of Jesus. Where, yeah, he actually had to prove himself time after time where people would accuse him of things and and make him out to be the bad guy when he would be creating miracles. So it's like, I don't want to just be subject to living a life that does not reflect who God has called me to be and then being disappointed that I never even allow God to enter my life and change it. Um, instead, I would just walk a straight path to stay like secure, to stay like underneath like the point of like not stepping on any toes or just, I'm like in a very like, that self-discovery stage right before you go into your 30s uh, that I've always heard about is like here now. 
the 30s crisis that I was talking about some months ago, I surpassed that point. Now I'm like in the crisis, like, or I'm, I'm past the crisis part and I'm like more in the, so I went from actually like feeling like I was in a crisis to now like facing the crisis and being like, you know, like this is just where my life is right now. That's what's coming with knowing like the God that I serve and proving that he is the God that I serve. I've had many seasons where I've just had to walk by faith and I feel like as I was walking through faith, I don't know if I was giving God like the glory out loud. I would kind of just like spend my time with Jesus. I wouldn't like show the world my like that I was doing that, but I think I'm in more of a season where like it's time to start doing that. Not to mention that like, you know, my idea of knowing the Lord and growing up in religion was that the fear of the Lord was the beginning of all understanding. And the fact that like, yes, I can understand that two things can be true. I can fear the Lord, but I can also trust in the Lord. I can love in the Lord. I can depend on the Lord. I can call on the Lord when I'm feeling sad, when I'm hurt and not have to fear him in those moments, but know that he will change my life, that he is the orchestrator of my life. I didn't know God in that way. So to be like, this age and to start this year in my bible i've seen so many like um lifestyle content they've transitioned to from beauty content um to li from lifestyle content to beauty content and to get into like faith-based content only um not to say that's where my channel is headed but if it does head that way and my content in general just start to head that way. I can't be afraid of that. I can't say no, the world doesn't doesn't look like this. I can't say no, like the world isn't adjusting to this form of life because then I won't find my people just like how Jesus found his people. Like I am looking for my people and it's becoming more and more like easy to connect with my people in my own community or I let go of old beliefs, AKA the girl that I met because we went to the same church who has different beliefs than I do now in this point of my life. And it just goes to show that like, that was never supposed to transpire past that time. That was never supposed to be something that will like in the future be like at my wedding and like the godmother of my children, like that wasn't supposed to be that. And it showed so fast. Thinking that like the ways God wants to use me um, are just becoming more apparent. And I'm just becoming more like accepting of it. Whereas before I wasn't, I was kind of like, well, how am I gonna live my life? How am I going to like, I grew up doing the Sabbath day. I didn't grow up celebrating holidays, but the last few holidays I've celebrated with my partner and we've come to love how our space looks when we decorate it and everything. But I know deep down that that is not my upbringing. Now, do I still try to believe in that? Like that whole tugging of who God has called me to be versus who he needs me to be in this calling is constantly on a... um on a like merry-go-round who are we gonna be who are we gonna serve how are we going to like so i don't know i'm just discovering and leaving behind the old 20s mentality when i step through those doors of my 30s and recognizing that it's okay to be that girl that prays. It's okay to be that girl that talks about God online. It's okay to be that girl to who started over to figure it out and to get it right. It's okay to be that girl who has tried to mend those friendships that she felt like was for her, but turned out to not be for her. Like It's okay to lean on the friends that are in your life when you are going through transition like it is okay. And I'm just so thankful that I'm more open to trusting into relationships that actually align with who I am today and not who I was some time ago when I was a kid, before I had consciousness of 
who I am and the choices that I make. Um, so, but that line is crazy. But that is the end of this get ready with me vlog. I thank you guys so much for listening to me ramble. I thank you guys so much for subscribing, watching, sharing my content. I really do appreciate it. So now that we are all done with my makeup, that concludes today's get ready with me vlog. I want to thank you all so much for like, commenting, and subscribing to my YouTube channel. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to this video. And I will see you guys in the next one.